Good morning and welcome. At this time, I call to order Muskogee Creek National Council emergency session, October 4th, 2021. Time is 10.01 a.m. This time I'd like to ask uh, second speaker, Daryl Proctor, to do the invocation, please. Thank you, Speaker. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day and uh, for coming together today. I pray that you be with us as we do the nation's business. We hear guidance today, Lord. I'm thankful for everything you need to do for us, and I pray for our nation. I pray for the ones that been infected by COVID, and I pray for the, all the ones on the front lines and the health systems and in our military also. We are thankful for everything that you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Secretary. Roll call, National Council Secretary Alicia Strobel. Speaker Randall Hicks. Present. Mary Crawford. Present. Joyce Deer. Present. Patrick Freeman. Here. Joseph Hicks. Here. Robert Huft. Present. James Jennings. Here. Adam Jones. Adam Jones. William Lowe. Here. Anna Marshall. Anna Marshall. Charles McHenry. Here. Thomasine Yehola Osborne. Present. Daryl Proctor. Here. Mark Randolph. Present. Travis Scott. Here. Lucian Tiger. Lucian Tiger. Present. Adam Jones. Anna Marshall. So you have 14 present, two absent. 14 present, two absent constitutes a quorum. All business conducted will be official. Order of business, TR 21-136. A tribal resolution of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the election board to execute a legal service agreement between the Muscogee Creek Nation Election Board and Jeremy <coughs> King, LC, sponsors Robert Huff. Motion to adopt. Representative Huff made a motion to adopt TR 21 136. Do I have a second? Second. Randolph. Second by Representative Randolph. Discussion. Speaker, give time to the election board, please. Okay. Uh, who would like to speak on, for the election board? Uh, this is Eugenia Tiger, vice hey, chair. Thank you for calling in, Ms. Tiger. You have the floor, ma'am. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I would just like to say that uh, we would appreciate having uh, Mr. Pittman on board with us at this time. Uh, we uh, didn't realize that we had to have council approval at the time when we requested him to be our attorney. So uh, before, <coughs> excuse me, before when we were actually looking for attorneys, we uh, nobody responded back to us with a list of the attorneys that we did have, that we did have on the list. And uh, so we, uh, we felt like you know, we had to keep trying and trying. And at the time, uh, Roger Wiley uh, explained to us that he would uh, uh, be, could be our attorney at the time when, uh, if there was a, a need for him. And so when this situation came up, we, uh, he felt like that he couldn't interfere, be involved, involved with us and the new petitions that has, that has came up. So in the, in the meantime, we just decided to go with uh, Mr. Pittman if he was available. So uh, that's how this uh, came about because we do have these petitions that are coming up and right now we do need a lawyer. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. Uh, is there any other board members who'd like to speak? That, that was Tiger, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Ms. Tiger, I'm sorry. Any other yeah. board members? Any other council? Any other discussion? Any 
other discussion? Speaker. Uh, go ahead, Representative Scott. Thank you. I, I just want to know what the alternative is going to be for the election board in case this doesn't pass. Uh, can I speak again? Yes, Ms. Tiger, you have the floor. Uh, well, uh, just in case this doesn't pass, we're going to have to uh, we've go back to our list. We've had several names that we've uh, had, that has come up, and we'll have to go through that depending on who we can get, and we'll have to go same, through the same procedures. We kind of have a backup plan with two other attorneys, but we have to get their approval to be our attorney. Thank you, Ms. Tiger. Representative Scott. That's it, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Tiger, how will this uh, affect the court hearings that are forthcoming if this does not approve today? Well, uh, we are set for tomorrow uh, to finish out the hearing if we're approved. I guess we'll have to go back to the judge and see what day that we can get back on the uh, hearing date. But that date is for tomorrow that they're going to proceed with the uh, petition. If we get approved and if we're not approved, we just have to go back to them. The tomorrow, tomorrow is the day of the hearing again. Okay. And then you mentioned that you guys or the board had a list of attorneys. Has any contact yeah. been made? Uh, not yet. We're trying to see what this is going to do for us today. And then we'll get right back on it. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Tiger. Any other discussion, council? Speaker Lucian. Go ahead, Representative Tiger. Thank you, Speaker. Is Mr. Pittman on the line? Uh, Mr. Pittman, are you on the line? Representative Tiger, I do not see, and there is no response for it. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I guess there, I realize there's a waiver. From Mr. Yes, Pittman, there is. Is yes, there is. There was a waiver. We have that waiver. We had a waiver from uh, Mr. Pittman. He sent that into the office. So my question would be to the candidates that are in the Fusky district, how would this, even if the waiver is in place, how is that fair to those individuals that are candidates for the Fusky district seat B when uh, Representative Travis Scott is a candidate for that district and his attorney is, his personal attorney is Mr. Pittman? How's, how does the board not see that as a conflict? Waiver or no waiver? I think too that uh, Mr. Scott, he gave his waiver to, in order for us to use him. But if that's, if that's the conflict of interest, uh, we'll have to do something else. Yes, in my opinion, the only way that anyone should support this is if Mr. Pittman was to recuse himself as representative Travis Scott's attorney uh, not a waiver, but actually recuse himself and not, not represent represent Travis Scott uh, anymore in this case that he's in, nor plus as uh, the election continues on. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Representative Tiger. Any other discussion? Speaker. Um, speaker. Uh, Representative Scott. Thank you, sir. I just want to clarify something that uh, you know, no one's challenging the Oak Fusky district. So uh, I, I think we've set a precedence in waivers when the council had a waiver with uh, Mr. Davis in, in a separate issue. So I, I don't know what the conflict of interest would be. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Scott. Speaker Lotion. Go ahead, Representative Tiger. Representative Scott, the conflict is that Mr. Pittman is your personal attorney at this point in time. If the election were to be protested, if this election were to be thrown out and the election were to be protested, it doesn't matter what district you're from, you are still a candidate for a Fusky district. Therefore, the election board attorney 
would not only be re representing the election board, he would represent you as an individual, as a candidate in that district. It doesn't matter what district you're from. The precedence there is a, an awful precedence for all candidates. Thank you, Speaker. Perfect. Speaker. Uh, Thank you, Speaker. Um, I'd just like to ask Ms. Tiger, is Mr. Pittman the only one they ask, or how many lawyers have they asked? Thank you. Thank you, Representative Randolph. Uh, Ms. Tiger, would you like to answer? Uh, yes, we've asked several lawyers, but they have never uh, actually responded back to us. We uh, asked them to be, uh, I think we've had about three or four that we have contacted, and they have never responded back. And so we just kind of set it back because the election was coming up, and we felt like that, you know, we could pursue it at a later time after Mr. Wiley su suggested that he would be able to help us at, if, we, if needed. And that, so we tabled that at that time uh, just in case. But now since this has come up, we do, uh, I think that with this case coming up, we, we do need our lawyer now without the, without the help of the AG. Thank you, Ms. Tiger. Representative Randolph. Uh, Ms. Tiger, can you tell us, I mean, how many lawyers have you, you talked with? We actually, we haven't really talked to any of them. Like I said, we have contacted them, but they've never responded back to us. So okay. that's our problem okay. right there when they don't respond back to us. Okay. We've gone, we've gone uh, through the uh, Muskogee Creek Bar to make sure that, you know, we are within our limits of who we can use. So um, that's our situation right there. Okay. So how, how many did you contact that didn't respond? Like five? Ten, About five. Or? At least five or six. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Ms. Tiger. Thank you, Representative Randolph. Any other discussion? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker this is Mr. Thompson. Uh, Representative Yehola, then Ms. Robinson, or yes, Ms. Robinson will go to you. Representative Yehola Osborne. Thank you, Speaker. Um, I just want some clarification on if Mr. Pittman is not approved today. Will this affect tomorrow's um, hearing? And then also, if the election board has contacted several attorneys and they've not had any luck, how long can this thing draw out? Thank you. Thank you, Representative Yola Osborne. Ms. Tiger? I don't know if you can answer, but. Okay, uh, well, uh, they gave us the date to, in order, yes, for tomorrow, that uh, we're to receive an approval for an attorney. So I'm not saying what they're gonna do or whatever, but uh, that's, that's what they gave us on Friday, that we need an approval for an attorney. So I guess we can go back to calling attorneys to see if they can get approved, but I don't know how long they will take. It just depends on who, who's available. I, I think. Speaker, but I don't. Uh, I don't want it to. Uh, on my part, I don't want to be able to, not. Interfere with Travis Scott's attorney. If that's the issue right there, I think that. Uh, I don't want to intrude on that part for him to not to have his attorney. And I'm. Uh, with our board members, you know, we're, we're just trying to go according to the law. We're just trying to make sure it's all done right. And, uh, and I feel like that if, if that's the situation, I don't want to uh, intrude on his, on his ability to have an attorney. That's my take on it. And you can ask the other board members what they think. Okay, thank you, Ms. Tiger. Representing your whole, Osborne. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Robinson, did you, did you have something? 
if they're, we're currently looking, trying to look at the possibility of two two other attorneys in Tulsa. Okay, thank you, sir. Let's just go through. We have we haven't made contact with them, but if this if this if this fails, we'll we'll have to go try to talk to them. And if they fail, we're still we'll just have to keep going down the whole the whole list of uh, attorneys on the bar association. Okay, thank you, sir. Miss Thornton, did you have something you wanted to say? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you. Um, if we do not, just to answer one of the questions, is if we do not uh, uh, get this passed today, we will have to postpone uh, the hearing tomorrow. Um, it was po We were supposed to be on Friday and they postponed it to Tuesday to allow us to uh, procure a, an attorney. Um, and just to give a little bit more background, as you know, I'm new and I've only been there since January, but since I've been there, we have every month looked and sent out requests and made phone calls and, um, and individually talked to different attorneys. Um, and when it came right upon to where we needed to concentrate on uh, the election and because we had this assurance from um, the AG, we needed to move forward. And so uh, since this petition has been filed, we have uh, and since we talked with the AG, we have been looking. Uh, we do have uh, a couple of possible attorneys that we have, you know, we've been looking through the list, but uh, we have not contacted them, but we are in the process if this doesn't pass. But also it's going to depend on their availability and, um, you know, and at that point, I don't know how long it's going to postpone this. We are getting to the point where soon we're going to have to, you know, proceed with the, uh, the next mail out. So uh, I feel like it's very important. And I also want to point out that um, that um, Mr. Pittman is being retained just for this particular uh, petition. We haven't made a decision if that's going to be a long term, uh, you know, to retain him. But uh, right now, we're just in need to have somebody to represent us during this time so we can move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dorn. Any other discussion from council? Speaker James Jennings. Go ahead, Representative Jennings. <clears throat> is the AG online? Uh, Mr. Wiley is online. Well, they, they brought his name up several times. I'd like to hear what he has to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Jennings. Uh, Mr. Wiley, you have the floor, sir. Yes. Well, I've represented the election board before I became the attorney general last year, as you know, and I let them know that if there were issues or questions, I'd be happy to help them out. But an election challenge is a whole different matter. And if anybody's got a conflict, I have a conflict. I can't serve the election board and represent the interests of the nation at the same time, because sometimes the interests of the nation conflict with the interest of the election board. So um, in, a, in a case like this, in a disputed case in court. Um, so that's why I can't represent the election board in this matter. Um, and I told them that sometime back. Um, the question on the conflict, really, I've heard that raised. And, the, and really the standard on a conflict of interest is whether or not there's a significant risk that a lawyer um, won't have the ability to consider or recommend appropriate action for a client because of his relationship with another client. Um, uh, the lawyer, Mr. Pittman, is not representing two clients in the same lawsuit here, but the question remains, can, can he act diligently on behalf of the election board? And, um, you know, conflicts of interest can be waived I realize the election board is the client here and they are an independent constitutionally formed body, but um, the National Council does have some say in this and it, it is the one being required to approve this uh, attorney contract by law. So I think the National Council has the ability to say, weigh in, give an opinion on whether or not it believes there is a conflict of, in, in this case, whether or not they believe Mr. Pittman could um, zealously represent the election board. So, um, you know, it's a close call on any conflict. If, if the council's not comfortable with it, then it just needs to 
make it known and move on. If it's comfortable with it, then it can approve this contract and then the, the web, the election board would have a um, representation for the hearing tomorrow. Normally these hearings by law have to be held within 10 days from the date the petition is filed challenging the election. Today would be the 10th day, but I suppose if by agreement the parties want to reschedule, the court may reschedule that. Apparently it has uh, gone beyond the 10 days because tomorrow would be the 11th day. I don't know how the court's going to handle that if this is voted down today, but that's something for the court to take up. The council's consideration today is whether or not it believes there's a conflict. If it does, it should not approve the contract. If it does not, it should approve the contract. Thank you, Mr. Wiley. Any other discussion? We agree call for vote. Call for vote has been made. Roll call vote. Robert Huff. No. James Jennings? No. Adam Jones? Abstain. William Lowe? No. Anna Marshall? No. Charles McHenry? No. Thomas Angiola Osborne? No. Daryl Proctor? No. Mark Randolph? No. Travis Scott? Abstain. Lucian Tiger? No. Mary Crawford? No. Joy Steer? No. Patrick Freeman? No. Joseph Hicks. No. Speaker, you have 13 against and two to abstain. We have 13 against and two to abstain. That motion fails. That concludes the order of business. The next item on the agenda is announcements. Any announcements from council? Hearing none, can we a motion to adjourn? So moved. Really I motion to adjourn. Second. Seconded by Charles McHenry. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. This time I'd like to ask uh, Representative Adam Jones III to do the uh, benediction, please. Thank you, Speaker. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Most of all, Lord, Lord, just place your hand upon our tribe, Lord, and just bless them. Be the ones that are lost loved ones, comfort them. The ones that are sick, place your hand upon them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Representative Jones. Amen. Meeting adjourned 1024.